What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So you've seen the title then, today we're gonna to be discussing whether you should start dropshipping in 2019. So is it worth it? So it's a video I've wanted to do for quite a long time. I get a lot of questions from you guys and I wanted to put a lot of thought into it before I made this video, just because I don't wanna give you a broad, kind of irrelevant answer that doesn't really help you guys out that much. Um, I wanted to give you like a more logical, unbiased, um, and better answer just so you guys can make the best decision really because ultimately then I don't want to give you guys false hope or lead you down the wrong road and in three or six months time and maybe hundreds of pounds if not thousands of pounds of investment and um, realize it's something that you don't want to do so what I've done then is I've bullet pointed kind of like the main points or fundamentals of what goes into a dropshipping business um, I've got some notes on my phone and I'm just going to work through them one by one and just kind of tell you guys then how they will be affected in 2019 and whether that's a good or bad thing then um, if you want to start a dropshipping business. Now before we get into the points I just want to make I just want to say a quick note on skills so regardless of whether you succeed or not in dropshipping as long as you haven't spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds then I don't think you're going to regret the process because the skills involved in running the business that you'll have to develop and gain um, are going to are going to be valuable to you and your and your development and your life for a very long time. So when it comes to running a dropshipping business, then you need to know how to source products and negotiate with suppliers. You're going to learn the ins and outs of building an e-commerce store and how to maximize conversion rates and essentially make the most money. So when it comes to things like upsells and cross-sells, what they are, what good ones are, what bad ones are. Um, and then ultimately, probably the most important skill that you'll learn is marketing so social media marketing um, it's absolutely huge and it's only going to get bigger um, if it hasn't already then i'm pretty sure at some point it will become uh, the biggest marketing space in the world um, and if you get good at marketing and you can be, and you can turn a profit on pretty much any product then you you'll be able to walk into pretty much any business in the world and just get a job straight away if you can show somebody that if they put 10 pound in and you get them 20 pound out, then they're gonna pay you whatever you want as long as you're making them more money than you're costing them. So in terms of the skills involved in building a dropshipping business, they're very valuable and they're not just applicable to e-commerce um, and dropshipping, they will apply to a lot of different walks of life essentially. So um, anyway, that being said then, let's get straight into the points. And point number one then is products and suppliers. So as time goes on then, more and more products are gonna come onto the market and so are suppliers. It's never been easier then to start an import business, regardless of whether you're dropshipping or not. If you're just buying products in bulk, it is crazy easy now to do because of technologies um, and advancements in things like communication and shipping times. If you think back to just 10, 20 years ago before Alibaba existed, then I wouldn't have a clue how to go about sourcing a product from China. It was just this far-fetched idea um, that I just never would have considered. I mean, I would have been six years old at the time, but had I been old enough then, um, I just wouldn't have had a clue how to do it. Whereas now, anybody with an internet connection and a computer can literally start a business, a global business, sourcing products from pretty much any country in the world and then sell them in any country in the world. So as time goes on then, there's gonna be more products available to us which is always a good thing because there's more more ways of making money essentially and there's gonna be more suppliers as well because as places like China and Vietnam and the Philippines, as they start to realize the potential of being online and people like us essentially buying products on Alibaba or AliExpress, they're gonna they're gonna to wanna to be part of that. And so there's gonna be more suppliers coming onto those kind of platforms. And ultimately that's gonna drive up competition, which is always a great thing for people like us because it forces suppliers then to do two things. Number one is increase their quality because they wanna have the best product better than everyone else. That way people will source it from them and it's gonna improve pricing as well. Obviously everybody's gonna be competing on price. So effectively then you're you're gonna be able to find better quality products for a cheaper price. And this is actually a really, really important reason because if you walk down one of the main roads in, in any kind of major city that's full of restaurants and bars, then only the good ones survive. And that's because they're providing a good service, a good product at a good price. There's, the competition is so high, unless you're good at what you do, then you just won't survive. So in terms of sourcing products and quality products from decent suppliers as well, um, then it only becomes a good thing. So a quick little story then for you guys, because I know 
know a lot of you like to hear stories about my past and things I've done. So when I went to China last year then I met these two English blokes who had been importing goods by the container load um, for about two decades and been doing it a long, long time. And they told me this story then about this guy who was in the kitchen niche. He was selling um, like high quality kitchen tops. They were either marble or slate, I can't remember. Anyway, he was sourcing these kitchen tops by the kilo and he was paying by the kilo and he was paying about $20 per kilo for these kitchen tops. So he went to the Canton Fair, which is the world's biggest import, the world's biggest import export expo. And he found this supplier then that was, it looked legit, like they had all their big banners with their company names and they had product samples, they had people in suits, catalogs, everything. And they were showing him samples of pretty much the same product he was sourcing, but they were quoting half the price. So he thought he was onto the winner, went back home to the UK, struck a conversation online with them, speaking to them over, um, over email, and decided to place an order for a 40 foot container just straight away, just committed to a massive order of that load. And he thought he was in the money because obviously he was paying half the price. And when a container comes into the UK, then there's a check-in sheet, which is basically where import and customs check it against what the supplier is saying to basically make sure that it matches up so there's no funny business going on and because he was important by by the kilo then that was kind of like the main kind of like the main figure that had to match up so anyway the weights matched up uh, the container finally arrived he went down to the port um, to accept it and collect it and he opened it up and all he found was rubble, like just mixed and matched, like broken up rubble. It wasn't even the correct material. The people who we placed the order with have literally have gone to the level of weighing the container and filling it to the correct kilogram of rubble. Um, so the whole thing was pretty much just a waste of money. Uh, needless to say, then the supplier just went underground and he never got his money back. Now, I think that, that was about 10, 20 years ago. I can't really remember. But in terms of things like that, that happening today, yes, it does. There will be, obviously, there's going to be people out there that's, that want to take advantage of people. But it's a lot more difficult to do because just go on AliExpress and Alibaba now and you can see how long stores have been in business. You can see how many orders they've sold and fulfilled. You can see what star rating they've got. So in terms of finding a good supplier as well, um, it's just so much more easier to do now. And if anything, it's only going to get easier to do that if it can at all. It's already really easy. Um, so in terms of finding products and supplies, then it's just a really easy process to do. And if anything at all, it's only going to get easier into 2019. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little story then. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Um, and if you want to hear more stories like that then about my past experiences and trips to China, uh, then just make sure you leave a comment down below or something. So anyway, moving on to point number two then, which is Shopify. Now, to be honest with you guys, I haven't used any other platform online, any other e-commerce platform online. Um, in terms of like how in depth I've used it compared to Shopify, I haven't, so I can't really talk much about Shopify versus other platforms. But what I can tell you is that if you wanna make a lot of money, then Shopify is more than adequate. And in terms of, one thing I have looked at is add-ons, like things like the Shopify app market and extra apps you can get for Shopify. If you compare that to any other platforms of WooCommerce, Wix, WordPress, then the add-ons you can get are just second to none. And that alone should be enough to sway your decision, just purely because the add-ons you can get like will significantly increase your revenue if you use them correctly. Things like upsells and cross-sells, customizations you can do to your website, free shipping bars, uh, countdown timers round, uh, certain times of the year are great as well. So in terms of add-ons then it's really good. And since I started using it then, uh, going on probably two and a half years now, it's changed quite a lot, especially in terms of the reporting that you can do. Um, again, I can't really talk about other platforms, but what I'm trying to say is they keep putting more money into it and developing it. Um, so in terms of moving into 2019 and even further, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't continue to do that. And it goes back to that whole competition thing. So there are loads of other e-commerce platforms. So they're all gonna be competing against each other, which should make all of them up their game. So Shopify should make sure they stay on top of everybody else and hopefully then keep their prices down as well. So there's not really a lot more I can say about it. Ultimately, you wanna do your own research. But from my point of view then, uh, I don't think you can beat Shopify now. But I will say then that one place or one area then that Shopify does fall short to the others of things like Wix and WordPress is that it's not drag and drop. So when it comes to design and customization in terms of the aesthetics and appearance of your site, 
then it's not as flexible as other platforms. But on the flip side of that, then the customizations that Shopify does give you is more than adequate to make more than enough money than probably most of you do want to make. Um, and you can actually make those changes as well, but you will obviously need some sort of coding experience. And what a lot of people don't realize as well is that when, when you start a Shopify account, um, then you do actually get one hour's free um, like time with a Shopify designer. If you go into the chat section, then you can actually ask them to do things for you. And you do, like I said, you do get one hour's free um, like design work with a Shopify designer. So if you haven't used that yet and you do want to make certain changes, um, then definitely something worth checking out. So moving on to point number three, and this is actually a really important point because if you want to scale your business then to be making significant figures, then you're not going to be able to do everything yourself. One of the hardest decisions is letting go of things, things like customer service as well, which is like people representing your business on a like on a first instance, like a first impression. If you don't get your customer service right, then it will just destroy your business. So that's one of the hardest things to let go, but it's also one of the most time consuming and I don't want to say unskilled, but as people start a dropshipping business, then our main focus has to be on marketing because that's ultimately what's going to bring the customers in. So, you, so point number three then is labor. Um, or virtual assistants and basically people to bring in and work for you so order fulfillment customer service and this is a really important point because as I mentioned if you want to scale so the, the point in which I started hiring VAs which was, was at about 70,000 revenue um, just because I found myself spending probably two to three hours a day just on Oberlo fulfilling orders and two to three hours of my time at that point was a lot of time I was still working a nine to five so like I said, it was it's not unskilled work, but it's work that would have been better off done elsewhere. So I could focus on the important things. So doing the product research and building Facebook ads and Facebook campaigns. And moving into 2019, again, as the internet grows, especially in these countries that are less developed um, and people's skills as well, people start to hear more about things like Shopify and opportunities for designers as well, which is crucial. Again, if you want to be successful with Facebook, then I always recommend um, having your own unique ad, whether that's um, an image or a video. Um, then more and more people are going to be coming online on on places like Fiverr or Upwork. And again, it comes back to that whole competition thing. Competition is gonna go create it. It always, always increases, especially when it comes to the internet because more and more people are using it. So as competition increases, so does the quality of the work and it should drive down prices or at least keep prices very competitive, um, which is always a good thing again for people like us who are gonna be bringing people in then to help with things like that. So to give you guys an example then of why virtual assistants and designers are so important then. So going back to the whole order fulfillment, so two to three hours every single day. Um, in two to three hours, I could probably come up with maybe a list of five or 10 really decent products. Um, or I could do that doing order fulfillment or I could pay someone $30 then uh, to process my orders for the day. So what I do is I pay my VAs $10 an hour, regardless of whether they're doing order fulfillment, customer service, whatever it is. Now, some of you guys who do have VAs might say that you can find people a lot cheaper than that. And yes, you can. But the way I look at it is if you, if you give somebody more than what they expect, then they're gonna return the favor and give you more than what you expect. So if you're gonna pay someone the bare minimum, then expect the bare minimum service. Whereas if you pay someone what they expect and more, then hopefully they should return that favor if they're a decent person. And at the end of the day, what's if I'm gonna pay somebody $5 or $10 an hour over the course of three hours, what's that, $15 a day? Um, depending on what kind of products you're selling, you can make that back for one single order. So. Um, in my eyes then, paying that extra amount um, is worth the return. So all that being said then, moving on to the fourth and final point, I feel like I've been talking for hours, so if you're still watching now, I really do appreciate it, thank you very much. Um, and the fourth and final and most important point then is marketing. So this is gonna be the biggie then, and probably the the point that kind of turns you on to start a store or turns you off. Um, and that is, so just speaking about Facebook ads then, because um, that's usually kind of the examples and what I talk about most on this channel. Now, Facebook ads are getting more expensive. So when I first started, 
back in July 2016, then I could pretty much put an ad out and just average five pound per purchase. And it would be no biggie, like it'd be pretty easy to do. I've documented it in past videos. Um, so just go and search for those. And in today's world, then that's not so much the case. Facebook marketing has got so much <clears throat> so much bigger. Um, and again, it goes back to that whole competition thing. At the end of the day, Facebook ads are a bidding platform. So essentially think of it like eBay. Everybody's bidding for that <clears throat> for that advertising space or that um, or for that cost per click or that purchase. So the more people that are advertising in your space, then the more it's gonna cost you. And again, as it becomes more and more popular, as more and more people cotton on to how effective Facebook is, then it's just gonna drive up prices. So yes, that's a bad thing, but there's a few things then that we can do to make the most of it or at least adapt and make sure that we actually survive. So number one, um, is sell more expensive products. So it's gonna become harder to achieve those lost cost per, lo those low cost per purchases. But if you sell more expensive products, then there's gonna be more room in there to effectively account for your marketing costs. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, I post a lot of stuff on there when it comes to my own Facebook ads, and you'll see that I average anywhere from sort of, kind of around the nine, 10 pound mark per purchase. So depending on what your product costs, obviously that's gonna fit in or it isn't. And also what you need to be doing, what's gonna be key then pretty much from now onwards is building a brand or at least building a following on social media because the more followers that you have on social media, then the less money you're gonna to have to invest into, into marketing. So put it this way then, put it this way then, as a new business with zero followers, then in terms of organic traffic, we might get one or two from when we put a post on Instagram or Facebook, whatever it is, but essentially 100% of our traffic then is gonna come from marketing, which is, so it's 100% paid traffic. Whereas if we had a million followers, um, across all platforms, then essentially every time we put a post out which is gonna be free, then we're gonna get a significant amount of traffic. So that's what that's the way you've got to look at it. You've got to kind of, it's like a balancing act. So Facebook ads starts up, up here and then organic traffic is here, but as you build your following, then you, also, then you want to do it like this. And obviously as your organic following increases, then the amount you spend on ads should decrease because essentially you can bring more people onto your store uh, just through posting on social media. And just to illustrate then how important this point is, you've probably already heard the story by now, but um, it's one of the Kardashians, I think it's Kylie Jenner, um, has one of the biggest Shopify stores in the world that did almost a billion dollars in sales in the first year, and she didn't run a single ad. It was all just by pushing her products through her social media following. So in terms of starting a business now and moving forward, then branding, or like I said, at least having a social media following is gonna be absolutely critical to your success. If you just purely try and rely on your Facebook ads, then you can be successful, but what I'm saying is that it's gonna be difficult, or it's at least gonna be a lot more difficult than if you had that big or larger social media following to back. Um, and that goes for email marketing as well. So. Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but when I talk about Facebook ads, you obviously have your front end ads, which is essentially going out to cold traffic. So it's the initial point of contact with a potential customer. And every time they see your brand and hear from you, then obviously they start becoming more aware of you. And if they enter into your store, you can retarget them. So retargeting ads are going to convert a lot more. So that's going to drive down your cost per purchase. Um, and if they make a purchase and allow you to to essentially send them emails. And again, that's another way, that's another point of contact. And again, another way, email marketing is one of the cheapest ways of marketing as well. And that's gonna be people bringing in, again, that's gonna drive down your overall cost per purchase across all platforms. So I guess to kind of summarize then, Facebook ads for 2019, they're gonna get more and more expensive, but like I just mentioned, there are a few things you can do about it. But that being said then, that still doesn't, take away from the fact that Facebook ads are the most powerful, it's the most powerful method of marketing um, in my opinion because in terms of the level of of targeting you can do on your actual customer so like just to name a few like crucial things so age, gender, interests, location, what platform they're on, you just don't get that on any other kind of marketing platform. 
Um, so it's still the place to be. And if you want to get involved in dropshipping, you've got to think about it long term. And if, like I said, if you put a lot of time into Facebook ads and learn it, then it's going to be such a valuable skill. So if you're thinking about getting started in dropshipping in 2019, then you've got to think of it of a long term and kind of like a journey or a development. And if you put a lot of time into Facebook ads and develop those skills, then that one skill alone uh, will make you a millionaire. Whether that's your goal or not, it's such a valuable skill. Like I said, if you can make somebody uh, more money than what they have to pay you, um, then pretty much any business in the world will want to hire you. Um, so to kind of summarize then, or to give you like an overview of this video, then dropshipping 100% yes in terms of pretty much any other business model. Just to talk about the required investment up front is kind of minuscule compared to other other similar business models. Um, so yes, it's definitely worth starting in 2019, but just be aware of the points that I've just discussed. Um, and if you guys have got a different opinion to me or what are your thoughts, then leave a comment down below. I'm always interested to hear from you guys and see what kind of like the general consensus is. Um, and that being said then, I'm gonna wrap the video up. I've got absolutely no idea how long this video is. It could be 10 minutes, it could be half an hour, and there's gonna be a lot of editing to do. But anyway, if you're still watching, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate the support, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.